four years ago, the Yamaha Tenere 700 hit Australian shores, and I was one of the first to ride one. It impressed me for a number of reasons, and I ended up buying my Black Beauty. During these past four years, the mid-sized adventure twin market has become incredibly competitive. Every month, there seems to be a new model hitting the streets, and in my role as a motorcycle journalist, I've ridden every one of them and nothing that I've ridden has tempted me to sell my Black Beauty. So it's time to review this keeper, warts and all. I caution this is not going to be a Tenere love fest. Now before we get started, we've made a heap of content on the Tenere 700 in terms of bike builds and suspension alternatives, and you'll find a link to that playlist on the top right hand corner of your screen. Worth a look if you're thinking of buying a T700 or thinking of upgrading your existing bike. Welcome to my review of my very own Yamaha Tenere 700. It's got 18,000 kilometres on the clock, not as much as what I'd expect, but I've been very busy riding a whole lot of other things. And there's a great advantage with that because I know where this sits amongst all the twins I've tested over the last year. The standard Tenere, you know, straight out of the box, you know, you can tell that it's got great handling but it really doesn't reach its full potential until you get the suspension done. And then it just becomes an absolute adventure slayer. It's brilliant. So what were the key features of the Tenere that motivated me to reach into my wallet and depart with hard earned cash and actually buy one? Well, the power delivery of the engine is a standout feature. It's so tractable and useful for adventure riding. The comfort of the seated and standing positions and the steering and handling of the bike in the dirt, but with qualification. I could see its potential in the smooth stuff, but I quickly found the limitations of the suspension when it started getting rough and I started pushing the bike hard. So let's start with the ergos. First is the seated position. It's got a great seated position, you actually feel in the bike and the distance between your body and the handlebars is very, very comfortable. You can sit on this all day. It's the same between your hips and your, your foot. It's the same, it's just very, very comfortable. When you stand up on the bike, it's just brilliant. I, I don't need bar extenders or anything. It's just perfect for me and very comfortable. The windshield on the bike is great for me. I don't have any helmet buffeting at all. You can sit on this bike all day and it's just incredibly smooth for me. In terms of the ergos, the only thing that is weak in terms of the ergos is the, the rear brake activation. It's spongy is not the word, but it doesn't have good feel compared to many of the other bikes I've ridden. And that's arguably probably one of the weaknesses of this model of the bike. It, it, yeah, no matter what I do to it, it just doesn't have the feel of um, comparable bikes in that market. Front brakes are good, uh, clutch activation is good and progressive and I don't have a problem with that. And uh, the gear shifting, yeah, it doesn't have a quick shifter. Who needs it? Just change gears normally. So that's good. The only regret I have is the fitting of these IMS adventure pegs. They're just too long and too wide. Now you don't normally hear me say that. Yeah, see this foot peg's just a little bit too long and a little bit too wide, but IMS make a smaller one. The Enduro is, I think, a better, better option. suspension on this is so good in that rough stuff just amazing just amazing I'm so glad I got that done it's pretty clear from this video that my suspension is now sorted there's no way in the world you could hit those bumps at that speed with standard suspension. If you did, the forks would fall through the stroke with a crunch that would make your teeth shatter. The rear shock is a little better, but not much. It was crystal clear to me and others that some suspension work would significantly lift the off-road performance of this bike. For me, the success of suspension work was so important in raising off-road performance, it underpins why this bike is a keeper. 
So what was the focus of my build for this bike? Well, suspension is obvious, but the other one may be not so obvious, and that's fuel range. My system is supplied by Rally Raid Products. They've been a long-term sponsor of Mad TV, and for the forks, it consists of a 35mm open cartridge kit and new springs, an attractive adventure rear shock with hydraulic preload adjuster and spring, and costs $4,050. But there are alternatives out there, and a significant improvement can be made to your suspension for as little as $1,000. Whilst I love the power delivery of this engine, its fuel usage varies considerably depending on how heavy you are with the throttle. If I'm gentle, I can get it to hover around 4 litres per 100 kilometres, but generally it's closer to about 5.2 litres per 100 kilometres. With the type of adventure I do, I like to have a fuel range of around 400 kilometres, and with the 25 litre Safari tank, that's easily achieved. Now this fuel tank is a little bit controversial. It holds 25 litres and gives me a range of 500 kilometres. Now a lot of people say, oh, these are top heavy and they, they raise the centre of gravity. That's true when you fill them to 25 litres, but you don't always have to fill them to 25 litres. If you put, say, 14 litres in it, which is roughly the standard that a T7 has, it actually has a lower centre of gravity because this tank actually extends right out underneath the engine, underneath the cowling there. So I think that's a good trade-off and I'm quite happy with that. The rest of the time when the tank's, you know, a third or a half full, you don't even notice the difference. Now we're coming down to my nemesis. You know, and this is the thing, you know, when you're carrying, you know, in comparison to the 690, another, you know, 80 or 90 kilograms, and you get into stuff like this, this is where your blood pressure starts to raise. Got to see if I can navigate my way through here. Now, did I mention weight? The mud holes in this area are renowned for being bottomless, and in these conditions, the weight of this bike raises its head. Time for that discussion. Oh. Right. It's a quick panic, panic blat then. You always hear me going on about weight and trying to avoid weight on a bike. Well, when I've been building this twin, it's been completely different. And I started off with a whole lot of OEM parts. It's got the OEM rear pannier rack that can take hard and soft panniers. It's got a centre stand that adds another couple of kilos, but it's incredibly beneficial when you're out in adventure and you just want to change a wheel or work on the bike. It's got a OEM heavy duty off-road bash plate and that's worked a treat and it's also got OEM crash bars. Now I've dropped the bike heavily a couple of times and I've bent them in to, as I've fallen uh, and you just tie them, just get a strap and tie it to a tree and just bend them back out again and they're fine. Irrespective of my larger tank, the bike is top heavy, and when things get tricky, those excess kilograms are not your friend. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this is an interesting one. <sighs> oh shit. <laughs> God, that was close. <laughs> Doesn't get closer than that to get on the drink. Yeah, my panniers were sticking out proud. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, that could have ended in tears then. I 
time to talk about reliability and potential vulnerabilities of this bike. First, reliability. You should be hearing crickets, and that's right. Nothing has gone wrong with this bike, absolutely nothing. Yamaha equals reliability, point blank. Being able to depend on your bike to get out there and back is a huge selling point for the Yamaha and my pursuit for adventure. There are two vulnerabilities to the T700 and the first is the bracket for the rear exhaust and without protection, without a pannier rack over the top, if you fall heavily you tend to bend this bracket in up at the top, it's got a mount, the, two, the bracket lands on a piece of a pipe like that and it bends in and, it, and it's not healthy and I'd strongly recommend if you're going to get one of these you must have some form of pannier rack or protection for the muffler. The other one is the water pump, that's where the water pump gets cracked there if you fall over on a rock, hopefully this plastic guard does something to stop that, but um, yeah I've seen them go. In one get off I did a, a massive great big slide down the road and I took the back brake and the back brake ended up up here. Now the beauty of it is it's made out of mild steel and all I've done is I've bent it back down but the funny thing is when I bent it back down I've actually raised it a bit and now it's perfect it's like it's got a, a, a brake extender on it but that works perfectly for me but the, the rear brakes themselves they're meh. <laughs> Climbs up, but that's the great thing about a twin, you know, you got that extra security, it's just a bit less likely to stall on snotty stuff like that. So I love about this bike, it just just kicks off from nothing. You can just putt through this stuff. And if you want torque, you got it. Now the Yamaha T700 shuns technology in terms of ABS and traction control. Yes, it does have ABS, but in terms of the ABS systems that I've ridden with in the last year, this is primitive. This is way down the bottom of the pile. Um, having said that, you can turn it off, but it's a little bit irritating. You, before you start riding off-road, you've got to press this button on the dash, and you've got to hold it one, two, three, four, five, I think it is, or three seconds, and then the ABS is turned off and Bob's your uncle and everything's good. The ABS system, I don't like it at all. Some people like it on the dirt, I don't. But for me, it is the absence of traction control that attracts me to this bike. You are the master of your own destiny when it comes to harnessing its power. There's no distractions, but having to turn traction control off every time you hit the dirt is a pain in the backside. No traction control on this bike. Well, now you know why this bike is a keeper for me, but would it make a good adventure bike for you? For those new to adventure, reliability, engine power delivery and handling are the bike's key strengths. It's a little top heavy and standard seat height is on the high side, but it can be lowered. With any mid-sized twin, weight is an issue and the T7 is a little top heavy and difficult to pick up off the ground. For those dirt riders making the conversion to adventure, they'll be making a trip to a suspension specialist pretty quickly, but the money will be well spent. My bike is now set up for Outback Adventure with the occasional tough stuff and it's perfect for me and it will be staying firmly put in that garage. Thanks for watching Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV. If you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe. In my next post, I'll be reporting from Australia's BMW Enduro Safari, which is heading from Cairns to Darwin, a spectacular trip covering a unique part of Australia's wilderness. Much more rain than I thought. Bloody four wheel drives.